So we had a nice rejection off the top of this ascending pattern, which I shared on our Monday video. Remember, typically we do them every Sunday, but we did have Memorial Day uh, this weekend. Uh, so we did nice rejection exactly off this ascending pattern. You can see where it started uh, back here. I did mention it, like I said, on Monday, but we have this ascending pattern that we've been trading within for a very long time. Now you can see the resistance has acted as a key rejection spot numerous times, as well as the lower end acting as a support. And we did just reject off of it on Tuesday again. And this was was a form of an exhaustion gap up. Uh, typically when you see a gap up like this that has a hard rejection within the first hour and then that gap up or at least the gap uh, is filled shortly after uh, that shows a sign of exhaustion for bulls and typically is a precursor to further weakness uh, which was the case and we're still amidst that weakness now. Uh, so it's very likely we do retest this lower end around this 416-ish level going into the end of the week uh, just because it did touch the top, had a hard rejection and likely will retest this again. The question question is, will it break below or find a support and then go back up to the top? We will have to see based on price action once it does fall back to here, but still very important to note this level right here as a support because again, if it does break below, that is a straight shot down to around this 408, 409 level, which is a retest of this blue trend line. We just retested this here on May 24th and we bounced up quite a bit all the way till we reached this resistance again. Um, so this would be the next key support level if we were to break uh, below here. Of course, that's a lot of downside, but technically speaking, this is what would happen. One could also argue because what we saw last time, we had a bear bait scenario here on May 24th uh, because we did gap down below the trend line, this trend line right here from the ascending pattern. Uh, but then the following day, we gapped up above and it never looked back. Price continued to the upside and we saw a major squeeze afterwards. We've seen a lot of these bear bait scenarios, especially on QQQ lately, uh, where you have a key trend line that's broken to the downside for about a day and then the following day has a lot more upside followed by a squeeze. So that also would be something to watch for uh, once we retest this trend line over here. Always good to see uh, two daily confirmation candles uh, below a certain level before confirmation can be established. A further downside weekly candle, of course, is the best, but that does take uh, quite a while, of course, five days uh, for that weekly candle to print. But an example trade setup would be an hourly close below this trend line uh, leading into the end of the week or early next week. One could take a short position with a stop loss being an hourly close back above. Remember, the shorter duration of the candle, uh, the less room for error you have in a sense. Uh, so it's better to have those higher candles. But of course, it is a longer time period in between um, each of those candle durations. Uh, but still, that'd be a theoretical. Also, you could take a long around this support of around 416 uh, to 416.30-ish uh, because one, that would be a double bottom if this did hit this week specifically uh, because we did bottom today off this level. And then two, a nice convergence with this ascending pattern support. And you could take longs off of that with a stop being a bit under. So just some theoretical trade scenarios uh, you can look for. But what I really want to talk about today, what's very interesting is over here in the dark pool levels tab on Cheddar Flow, we had 5.5 billion worth of premium at the 420.17 level. This is right at that record level in terms of premium for the year of 2023. We've seen a 5.6 billion a couple weeks ago around that 417 level. This is 5.5 billion. So both of those neck and neck as being the highest of the year. Super critical guys, especially the fact that both of these, this 5.5 billion one and also the 5.6 billion one happened right around the same area. 417 and 420 are pretty high, especially because they're at the top of the range we're in. Remember, if you just go to an hourly chart over here, you can see we're still pretty much range bound. We did technically a break above just based on last week's weekly candle, but still we're back down right around the top of the previous range. And I'd still consider all this to be within a range. We haven't seen a decisive break out, which would require us to get above this ascending pattern. And we also haven't seen a decisive breakdown, which one would have to be a break below this roughly 408 level with the second phase being a break below this 404, which would be right about 4,050 on SPX. This is the critical level for a lot more downside. You want to see a break below 4,050 on SPX. And then of course, for bulls, the upside would be a break out of this ascending pattern above this roughly 423, 424-ish level. Uh, so keeping that in mind, we have yet to see 
either of those happen yet, so we still are technically range bound, and we have been looking at a ton of dark pool premium every single day. 5.5 billion in premium is a lot, guys. Very rare to see something over 5 billion. We've seen it a couple times now. We've had a 5.2 billion one, a 5.5, and a 5.6, so this is a record amount of premium. It's super rare to see this, and I know I keep reiterating it in each video, but it's super important. This is rare, guys. Uh, this amount of premium every single day, and typically that is a precursor to a very large move. And considering the fact we've seen record levels of dark pool prints, especially signature dark pool prints around, especially this 410 to 420 range, which is pretty small in the grand scheme of things, that typically is a sign of a very large move occurring once a breakout or a breakdown is established. Of course, we have yet to see confirmation of either. What I just mentioned below, you want to see under, well, first that 408, but then 404 level for confirmation of a breakdown. And then the breakout would be roughly 424. 4-ish, 425 max. A break above that would be a clean breakout. And once either of those is established, that will lead to a very extended move because remember, we just haven't been seeing this amount of premium in a very long time. Uh, so keep that in mind. Just wanted to let you guys know about the activity in the dark pools, especially how high it's been. 420, that is very high up. And again, institutions are the only ones that have access uh, to these dark pool exchanges. So 420 roughly around this level. Super unlikely that they're buying up here. Seems to be selling. One could also argue if you go back over here to the 25th, that was Thursday of last week, uh, we had a $3.2 billion print at the 411.03 level. And we had a nice bounce off of this level. You can see on the graphic over here, a nice bounce right off uh, where this print came in. So not all of these prints, at least in my bias, are sells. Uh, but typically when you do get to the near high of a range, especially when you are extended over a long period of time, especially since all the way back in the middle of March. Uh, we've either chopped or gone up. Uh, typically, that is an indication of a sell, especially because a lot of those 5 billion plus prints have been around this top range. So something to be aware of. Also, one more thing from today. Uh, we did see a nice bounce off of the bottom of my now previous supply zone level. We're right in the middle of this supply zone. We did close last week just a tad above it and we're able to have it as a support yesterday, but then we had a gap down back within it. Uh, so this did act as both a resistance on the top end. You can see here, uh, 4,195 key resistance numerous times today. And then also this lower end around this 4,170 act as a key support. And there was a nice convergence of this blue trend line along with the bottom of this previous supply zone. If you look over here at the hourly chart, you can see uh, this one similarly starts from the pivot high on August 16th, but instead of connecting it to the pivot high here on February 2nd, I connected it over here to the pivot high on May 1st. And this also is a viable support slash resistance trend line acted of course as a support today, which we saw a bounce and it will be a key level going forward because if it's broken, well, first you'll likely see uh, this lower end get retested. But if this trend line here in the ascending pattern, along with the bottom of the supply zone, and also this trend line over here are broken, especially heading into the end of the week, especially with a weekly close uh, that has more bearish emphasis, at least all the way down to 4,100 again. Uh, so bulls do want to defend this zone. So far they have, uh, but I do expect it to get retested here uh, going into the end of the week yet again. Also, one last thing that I noticed from this morning, we saw a lot of put leaps on Tesla, Meta, and also Amazon this morning, a lot more than normal, especially in a consistent basis. A lot of these sweep orders, and they also all were out the money. You can see, for example, here, this Tesla one, 7.3 million in premium, another Tesla one here, 10.8 million in premium for the 160 strike. So these are leaps. It is the 6, 21, 24 expiration. So that's over a year out. And also if you go further up here, you can see some 12, 19, 25 expiration. So uh, that is quite a ways away. I don't expect those to manifest in price anytime soon, but it's still something uh, to take note of, especially because we haven't seen uh, this aggressive of put leaps in a while. Um, and these all are for big tech tickers, which of course have been leading the market uh, this year. So again, Meta, Amazon, and Tesla all had these this morning. Something just to be aware of. Again, I don't expect the price of these to just end up tanking right after they added these, but this is a good sign uh, that somebody, at least a whale in this case, believes that we're within a range of at least, let's say five to 10 bucks for each of these tickers that will likely lead to downside, whether that's this month, next month, or the following. We don't know, especially because of how much time they have on their expiration, but still uh, something to note here. Somebody's getting a little bit more bearish on big tech for the long term. So just keep that in mind. And other than that though, appreciate you guys watching this video and I'll see you guys next time on Sunday.